The first step looked like the tough one, Keys. To get her husband's signature on an accident policy. But that turned out to be a cinch. He thought he was signing the auto renewals. And after that, everything seemed right in the groove. Phyllis told me she was... Phyllis told me he was going north at the end of the month to a college reunion. That suited me fine. There was a little clause in the policy, double indemnity for death by train. A hundred grand instead of fifty. And then, with only a week to go... Walter, he had an accident at the well. He broke his leg. The trip is off. And that's how it stood till a few days later. I guess you remember that afternoon, Keys. You'd come into my office and you were, you were kind of hot. Can you imagine a stupid lunk like this Gorlopsis trying to put a fast one over on me? I, I guess he didn't figure on your little man. Yes, my little man, right here inside of me. No, that's what I said. Walter, you can kid me about my little man, but he ties my stomach up in knots every time a phony claim comes in. Know what we found at Gorlopsis' place? Wood shavings soaked in kerosene. So I hauled him in here and... Go ahead, take it. It's probably for you. Well, why not? It's my phone. Hello, Walter Neff speaking. Walter, I had to call you. It's terribly urgent. Are you with somebody? Uh, yes, I am. Uh, can't you call me back, Margie? No, Walter. I've only got a minute. I can't wait. Listen, he's going tonight on the train. Are you listening? Walter. Uh, sure, I'm listening, Margie. He's on crutches. The doctor says he can go if he's careful. Oh, it's wonderful, Walter, just the way you wanted it. Only with crutches, it's ever so much better, isn't it? Uh, yeah, 100%. Uh, hold the line a minute, Say, uh, please, suppose I join you in your office, huh? I'll wait. Tell Margie not to take all day. Uh, hello, Margie. <laughs> Go ahead. It's the 1015 from Glendale. I'm driving him to the station. Is it still that same dark street? Yeah, sure, sure. I'll leave the garage door open. You can hide in the back of the car. The signal is three honks on the horn. Is there anything else? Uh, what color did you pick? Color? Oh, oh, yes. The blue suit, Walter. And the cast is on his left leg. Yeah, yeah, I, uh, I like that fine. This is it, Walter. I'm shaking like a leaf, but it's just like you said. Straight down the line. back in Walter Neff's office again. We can see the dark red stain on his shirt. It's larger now, and the pain lines cut deeper into his face. For a somber moment, he stares at the wall, then hunches over the typewriter again. We killed him, Keys. In the car on the way to the station, just the way we planned. I don't think he ever knew what hit him. We stopped at a place I had all picked out. We shoved him into the back of the car and tossed an automobile robe over him. Then I wrapped some stuff around my leg and made it look like I was wearing a cast. And that's how I got on the train, wearing that and a pair of crutches. Do you get it now, Keys? Do you see how carefully I'd worked it out? Dedrickson's body was in the back of the car, and still he was getting on that train. Phyllis kissed me goodbye at the train, and he told the porter to make up my berth. I said I'd go back to the observation platform. And that's where I had the first hint of trouble. There was somebody out on the platform already. Name of Jackson, he told me. The type that always introduces himself. I had to think fast. We were moving now. I didn't have much time, so I started fumbling around in my pockets. And then he noticed it and grinned. I bet you forgot something. You know, I always do. Yeah, my, uh, my cigar case. I must have left it in my top coat back on the seat. They can't roll yourself a cigarette, Mr... Dedrickson. Uh, thanks, I really prefer cigars. Maybe if I could get the porter... Oh, no need to bother. I could fetch your cigars for you. I'd be glad to. Oh, that's very nice of you. It's car 11, section 4. Are you sure it's not too much trouble? Don't mention it, Mr. Dedrickson. No trouble at all. That gave me my chance to hop off the train. Luckily, it was just about the spot we'd picked, and Phyllis was waiting there in the car with all the lights off. We dragged the body out and dropped it on the tracks. The crutches, too. Then we got in the car and started the motor and got away from there fast. (laughs) 
You'd better drop me off here. I'll, I'll walk the extra block back to my place, just in case. All right. Uh, good night. Walter. Yeah? Aren't you going to kiss me? Okay. It's straight down the line, isn't it? Isn't it? Walter, what's the matter? Aren't you nervous at all? No. Are you? Yeah. You mustn't be. I love you, Walter. Yeah, I, I love you too, baby. You know what happened after that, Keys. They found the body on the tracks. The autopsy showed a broken neck. They figured he'd fallen off the train. Even you, Keys, you thought so too. And if we got by you, the worst was over. I was really beginning to feel relaxed. And, and then the following night... Walter, I had to come. I had to see you. You're sure nobody noticed you? I'm sure. I looked all around first and... Walter. Get in the bedroom. Don't make any noise. All right, just a minute. Hello, Walter. Hello, Keys. What's on your mind? Say, Walter, you got any bicarbonate? No, I'm sorry. Uh, anything wrong? That broken leg. The guy broke his leg. What are you talking about? About decreasing. He had accident insurance, and then he broke his leg. Well, so what? He didn't put in a claim. Why didn't he? What the dickens are you driving at? Walter, I ate dinner two hours ago. It's stuck halfway down. That little man is acting up again. There's something wrong with the decreasing case. Well, maybe Norton was right. Maybe it was suicide. No, not suicide. But not an accident either. What else? Murder? Mm, I'll tell you better when I've checked on his wife. His wife? She's the beneficiary. Oh, that's crazy. You haven't got a thing to go on, Keys. No, not too much. Twenty-six years' experience, all the percentage, and this lump of concrete in my stomach. Say, I've got to get to a drugstore. I'll see you tomorrow. Can you imagine? No bicarbonate in the tray. Walter. Be, be careful. How much do you think he knows? No, it's not what he knows. It's those stinking hunches of his. Baby, from here on in, we've got to really watch it. I knew you, Keys. I knew how you worked. I felt like I was holding a time bomb in my hand without knowing what time it was set to go off. Say, Walter... I picked up something today from Mrs. Dietrichson's maid. She saw Mrs. D. trying on a hat, a black hat, like a widow might wear. Only it was a week before Dietrichson died. Walter, I heard from Jackson today. You know, that fellow on the train, he sent back those pictures of Dietrichson with an affidavit. He swears it isn't the man he talked to that night. Walter... It's coming apart at the seams. When I knew it wasn't Dietrichson on the train, I knew that dame must have had some help. She's got a boyfriend, Walter. He's been dropping in there every night around 12. I'm going to pick them both up any time I want them. It's funny, but that's the thing that hit me the hardest, Keys. That boyfriend of hers. I'd killed a man, I... I killed him for money and for a woman. And now I wouldn't get the money and I wouldn't get the woman. All along she'd been dealing with a crooked deck. I did a lot of thinking that afternoon. And then I knew what I had to do. That night I called up Phyllis and said I was coming over. I told her to keep the lights off and to leave the door unlocked. <coughs> I was all set now. Yeah, that's what I thought. What I didn't know was that she was set, too. And when I let myself into the house that night... In here, Walter. The living room. 